Hey guys, I'm back with a video on callouts. So basically, um, if you are someone, if you don't know what is a callout or callout designer, so it's absolutely fine because in this video, we are going to see uh, a basic demo on uh, what, what a callout is and what are different types of callouts that we have and um, how we will design right from the scratch. So it's completely fine to have zero knowledge about it. And uh, let's say, before I actually go in and explain you and talk about the functionality of the callout, I will uh, run the process and show what we are going to learn through the session. So I'm um, running the process in the debug mode. So for this uh, demo, I have taken a Facebook application and my process is running and it just opened the Facebook application. So if you just see here, it is a call out that it is uh, asking the user to enter the first name and the last name. So there are different types of call out. The one which you've seen earlier is a time based uh, call out. So it, it waits for a certain period of time that you ask it to be waiting for. So let's say this is the other type of call out, uh, which I can say it as an interactive call out because it uh, interacts with the user. So it is asking for a phone number or email. Let's say in case where you ha don't have an email account, you can still have an option to click on this button. So let's say um, what are the different actions that happens once after we click on these two different buttons. So let's say I wanted to create an email as I don't have one, so I can click on this. So if you just observe, okay, I have a breakpoint. Let me just continue the workflow. So it has uh, taken me into the Google account. So I clicked on create email, so it redirected me into this page. So in this way, we can actually um, interact, make the uh, call out uh, interactive with the user. So let's also explore the other option, which is submit. What will happen if the user gives the phone number and clicks on the submit button? So let's check the other option as well. I'm closing the applications and running the file for one more time. So I'm going to check um, what the other button action would look like. So this is my first call out, which is time based and it disappears after three seconds. So now in this case, I can give my phone number. So let's say I gave my phone number and I click on submit. So what the action that's gonna happen after I click on submit. So I have a breakpoint here. Let me just click on continue. So if you just see my robot has entered the phone number that I've given there in the call out. So like this, you can customize uh, the actions that are done by the robot based on the call out that you give. So throughout the session, I'll explain you what is a call out and how, what is a call out designer and how you can design different types of call out and how you can bind the input and how you can read the output and how you can do multiple actions. So if it's sounding interesting, let's get into the session and recreate the workflow. So I'm going to take a new sequence. So I'm creating it. And inside this, uh, I want a open browser activity. So let's say I want to go into this page. So I'll take the URL of this page. And after that, so before I actually pitch in the pitch in and explain you what's the, um, how we will design it. First, let me explain you uh, what is a call out. So basically, as you have seen, right, in this application, uh, once after you go into application, so it will guide you through the application. Uh, what are the fields that you have to give in? Let's say I wanted to give the first name and the last name. So it's just a guide or, you know, you can say the information that's always available when you go into the application without any further checking. Uh, let's say in this case, uh, there was a call out which has popped up saying to enter first name and the last name, right? So in the similar way, um, it's kind of text that's available to make you understand what uh, you have to do. That's very simple in a layman language. So now, um, as we know, we have to go into properties and change this to Chrome. And then after I open browser, I wanted to have a time-based call out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to type 
call out in the activities. So um, this will not be generated uh, without the dependency package uh, form dot activities. So you have to first get form dot activities uh, from the manage packages, and then you would to have this. So let's say I'm going to pull in the call out, and you can see it over here. We have our designer window inside the call out, right? So how uh, we will tag a call out to a particular UI element. This is how it is. You have to indicate the element inside the browser, and then you can tag um, that particular tag uh, uh, call out to that element. So let's see how we can do that. I'm going to indicate the element. This page, it has to be. So I'm going to tag my call out to this particular UI element. So I'm going to take the selector for this. So I can change the ID of it. I believe this is not constant all the time. So I'm going to explore uh, in your Explorer. And I'm going to add the name as last name, whatever I feel as a constant tax. So that's how it's getting highlighted, right? So let's save this and have it as my selector. So if you go to the callout designer, that's where exactly you have to explore. So if you check the callout properties, it's like a normal UI element property. You can keep it paid for ready. And then you have callout designer. So let's check the properties of the callout designer. So these are the properties. Before we explore, uh, let's go into the design callout. So this is my callout designer. So if you are familiar with forms, this is a little bit similar to that uh, without the data component here, but uh, you can actually have all these fields uh, that can go into your callout. You can have drop down, check boxes, text fields, radio buttons, and all these uh, items into your callouts. So now uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give a basic label uh, that just have to appear on my web page when I get into the application. So, Let's say I'll just pull my label here. And you can give the text inside the label, like how I've given. So you can you have to give the content over this place. So let's say enter first name and last name into the fields to create an account. So I'm going to give this in this way and I'm going to save it. So this is how uh, my label is going to appear. So I'm close. I'm going to remove this placeholder because I'm not using any text. And let's say if you want to uh, keep it more interactive, you can keep the button and say, OK, and then the call out disappears. But then I don't want uh, a button here and I don't want a title. So I just want only this text. Let's check how it appears in a preview. So this is a big call out, but I just wanted to make changes to how it appears. So let's change the width and height from here. So let's reduce the height. I'm good with 150 and then let's change this to 160. Okay, this looks okay for me. And then you have themes also to change here. You can keep any of the theme or you can customize the themes as well. So, and you can give the name for the theme and then it gets saved. So after that, um, I'm good with all the editings I've done and my callout is ready. So now um, let's check what are the changes that you've made in the format, like height and the width that you have done for the uh, call out, how it has to appear, that gets reflected over here. And then this is data binding, something which we will see as the advanced concepts of uh, call out um, and input as well. 
let's uh, consider um, the other option that we wanted to check in this first uh, basic caller, which is a timer. So you have to mention the timer for how long you want the uh, caller to appear. As this is not an interactive callout. So I'm going to mention like five seconds. So my callout will appear for five seconds and then it's gonna disappear. So this is the first example that's we, that we are going to see. So what I'm going to do, um, I believe uh, we are good with this. So let's run till here and check how this actually works. So before to which I'm going to close the Facebook application. And then I'm running the file. So Facebook got open and then it got appeared here and then it will get closed after five seconds. So that's how the basic one, like the time-based triggers, sorry, the time-based call out. Um, you can change the time also if you want, or if you want a button or interactive one, let's see how we can do that part as well. So now I'm going to, I'm going to pull a new call out. And then in this place, which is mobile number or email. So I'm going to indicate the element. In this uh, particular area, I want my color to appear. So let's check the selector and I don't want ID. So let's explore and try to give more robust uh, attributes. So my explorer got open and let's take off ID. Let's take, I feel that's uh, pretty okay. And now I'm going to highlight this and that's what my selector I wanted to. And so now we have selected the area where the call out has to appear. And now how it has to appear, let's go and design it. Open the call out designer. And then here we have options um, like how we've seen earlier. So in this case, I can have a text field and along with that, I want buttons, right? So let's pull two buttons inside it. My OK button is already there. So what I'm going to do here is change the label. So create email if you don't have one. So you can actually change um, the submit or click. So you can submit it and then you can change the theme also so that it will, um, the color gets changed uh, how you want it to appear. And then you can change the size. I'll go for extra small. So because I, my text is too much, so I'm preferring extra small. And you have um, all these options. Let's explore them later. But as of now, I'm good to go with this. So this is how my uh, first button will appear, create email if you don't have one. And one thing you have to remember here is, let's change the content for this as well. Later we can check it out. So the label for this is phone number or email. And the placeholder can be You can just mention like this and then just save it. Okay. And then um, we can edit the title also as I've done. So the title content you have to mention over here. Provide your phone number or email ID that helps to log in every time. So this I will change to tiny because it's too much of text and then save it. And let's say I want one more button instead of okay, I will say submit. 
so um so that's it um we can say save and let's check the preview so if you see the preview is like this so i can change my button to somewhere here or up or something like that then um, let's pull it a bit more like this let's change the button places so i'll go to layout and then i can have my columns here so I'll save this so that i can pull my this one over here oh sorry i'll delete this and pull a column again so this time it's clear okay i want to move it over here and then the submit one over here so i think this is quite okay but still it's appearing like this so we can make changes to this as we require mm, okay or else i can do one thing i can change the column one more column here and then save i can pull this move this one over here so i think this is okay let me save before i go for a preview mm -hmm. So this customization is built not so um, quite easily done because there's no action that could be I I could do um, to move the things easily. So I'm facing a bit of difficulty over here, but uh, we can still find options like knowing it from here and there. Okay, what I can do is I can just change the uh, maybe I can check if I can change this uh, text a bit. Maybe I can work on that part. So let's check and change this in this way. Let's check the preview. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's pull this value over here and then check the preview okay it's still there so the customization part you can change it as in you require um, i'm going to save it and just see how it actually appears there so till now uh, we have just created a call out how it will appear but we haven't binded any data so let's run this workflow and check um, i'm running it in debug mode so that I can check if there are any errors that appears. So my process is running. So the first caller, which is time-based uh, caller that appears here. And after five seconds, that immediately goes for the next caller. So this is how it's appearing. But if you see, I'm clicking on this button, but no action is getting done, but it's just um, simply it got exited because we haven't linked that button with any of uh, our uh, next going actions, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to edit the call out. I have to bind the data, right? So I'm going to work a bit on it um, just to pull it somewhere over here, or I can take label, sorry, panel. Let's try this but it's gonna work. <laughs> no. Okay, I'm losing this.
Okay, and so I'm not going to save it because I have by Mr. Click clicked on the other remove button. So my changes are still not affecting because I haven't changed it a bit. So now uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, link the output. So if you just see the button which I've clicked is create email, right? Uh, so we will be exploring the properties of call out in a bit. But before which I'm clicking on edit, okay, that's come and I'm going to make it small. Okay, let's make it medium one. Okay. It is still there. What I'm going to do, let's try to compress it a bit like this. Um, as per my assumption, if I compress, it has to come a bit like close, but it didn't happen. So let's go ahead with this, but this um, moving things here and there is uh, not a big deal. We can work on it, but as of now, uh, I can show how we can bind the data. So now uh, let's check with the small activity over here. So if you just observe uh, in the call out, we have explored the timer one, right? So after that, we have something called as output. So let's come from the down. So we have selected button option. So let's uh, create a variable like str selected button. So it actually returns a string. So under variables, if you just see, it gives a string variable as output. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to check uh, with the help of a right line or you can use message box, anything works. So I'm just pulling the box over here and whatever the uh, button that I press that has to show up here. So let's execute and see. I'm going to run the process because you are already familiar with what's gonna happen. And in the next time, I'm going to comment out this because we've seen that would be the same uh, thing that's going to happen in case of time based uh, call out. So it will wait for five seconds and then it will go for the next one. So in this, I'm going to click on create email. So if you see uh, create email that, OK, I haven't changed uh, the value. So this is going to appear. So let's see where this value is actually in the workflow. So I'm going to first of all comment this because we're not going to use this one. And later I'm editing the call out. And in this part, let's go for create email because that's the button I have clicked. So go to field key. If you just observe, uh, this is the field key that has populated in the message box. So just copy this one. And what you can do is just have that field key with you and then save this. And now what I'm going to show you is so if let's say the value of this equals this uh, value, okay? If this condition is true, that means if user have clicked on create email, that means he wants to go and create an email, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open a browser for him where he can directly navigate to that page, right? I have it handy with me. So I can just copy it. So um, 
now the user if that uh, if he clicks that button then he knows uh, the bot knows what to do it will directly take the user to that page and he can create a um, account before he actually take the next step right so let's say if the user clicks the other button in this case okay we don't have to call out anymore here so let's say um, in this edit call out there's an other button right which is submit so if you click on submit so what is the field key over here it's submit right so what i'm going to do here is whatever the phone number i have got in this particular uh, text box right i'm going to edit it i'm taking the field key of this particular text box Okay, so I'm going for the field key and here I have a placeholder, but I'm changing this to phone number because if you don't have an email, he has to enter the phone number. So giving phone number and I'm copying this field key and just say save and save and close it. So once after I get that output, I have to bind it right so let's do one thing before to that uh just save that somewhere so taking a notepad and saving the field key phone number and let's explore one more property which is a call out fields output data right so this is a call out output data that's coming from the call out so what i'm going to do i'm going to give a, a value variable for this so this is a json string so json string for phone number because i'm going to retrieve the phone number from this call out so user enters the phone number in call out so you can just see it's a string so change the scope of this to whole sequence so that you can use them outside and later, we have to deserialize the JSON string in order to fetch the value from it. So for that, you should have web API dot activities to get this deserialize um, activity available. So let's pull in that activity. And now, um, whatever the string output that you have got, the JSON string, just give it as an input and then you will get the output in a form of a json object so let's get, take json object which is a phone number All right so from here you wanted to get the value and you have to type in into this particular field right so i'm going to type into that field so just take type into and then you can indicate or either you can just get the selector from here because again going to explorer and changing it is not a good idea so let's take it from here and then you can validate you can just check if that's the field so i got it and what is the value that I have to enter here is from the JSON object, right? So now you need the uh, field key that you have extracted. So now take the JSON object and then add in the field key. So if it's confusing to you, I'll run it in the debug mode and I can explain you what exactly I'm doing in the background to get the value from the JSON object so first let me run the whole workflow later we can debug and see what's actually happening so i'm closing this and i'm debugging the process and i have closed uh, i mean i've commented the uh, time based trigger so it doesn't appear anymore so directly we've got the interactive trigger so here you have two options right so click on create email we have binded it with a certain action based on the selected button so i have to click on this and it will take okay it has shown me the uh, message box which is a create email and then it should take me to okay we haven't changed the browser type let me change it to chrome 
and then it has taken me to the gmail page where i can actually okay let me close this otherwise it gets confused okay i'm clicking on create email and then it has taken me to the gmail page where i can create a google account right and now um, we will check the other action that we have taken other button sorry so i'm going to run the file or oh, let's debug it so now in this case it has to be submit button the message box has to show submit and i'm clicking on so before you actually click on submit you have to give in the number right so i'm giving some num phone number and then i'll click on submit it, that it shows i have clicked on submit and after i say okay the number will enter into this message uh, text field so that's how it's done so let's see it. i believe till here it's clear for you uh, to understand more in depth let's um, try to check what is the output that's coming out from this call out designer so i'm going to put a break point over here or i can put over here and then once after it's done i can show so let's close this facebook page and let's try to debug this So now in this case, we have the call out. And then uh, before I actually click on submit, I'm going to give in the number and let's try to observe what's happening here. Okay, so this process is uh, still running uh, because I'm, I haven't given the information. So I'll click on submit and let's check if you see here, uh, we have JSON object phone number, which is null. And the string from the JSON object, which is from the um, call out is, so if you just observe here, the string is a uh, phone number, which is a binding element from the call out, right? Uh, if you just observe, this is the same uh, field key that's coming from the call out. And this is the value. So this value I'm extracting. In order to do that, I have to convert it into a JSON object, right? So that's what I'm doing it over here. So it, as we haven't clicked on the create email, it has uh, taken the other block and it's going here. And let's say we are deserializing the JSON. So now uh, after I deserialize it, the value of the JSON object will be having certain uh, values. Let's see the JSON object phone number is null as of now, but let me step into this. So you can see it has a value now. So the value is this one. So to retrieve it, I'm doing it with respect to um, the field key that we have taken. So from the JSON object, I'm using the phone number, which is a field key that I'm taken from the call out. And I'm converting it into a two string and type into is an activity that will fetch the value into the certain field that I've selected over here, right? So that will does the operation. So that is how uh, we can use a call out to do certain actions. So this is a small basic example, which I have chosen to make you understand if you're not familiar with call out and what is a call out designer is. So I hope this is helpful for you. And uh, going forward, we will see the different layouts like uh, what are the different layouts we have and how we can customize it to make it look more good and all these different types of things and we will see many advanced uh, things like in the call out properties uh, we have something called data binding like how we can bind the data how we can provide the data and how we can give that let's say if you have a drop down how we can give the drop down and uh, information to the drop down and how we can give the input and all this information we will see in going video uh, further in the videos so if you like the video please do let me know through comments and do like the video share and subscribe to my channel if you're first time over here thank you so much for watching